I do see a lot of people that are deeply wounded, uh, but also extremely angry. And they use that, that anger um, to kind of cover up how hurt they are. Yeah. In that situation, when they feel like it's their only protection, uh, what can they do to release themselves of that anger and resentment? When they had to realize anger is not your protection. Anger is your enemy. Anger is evil. There's no love in it. It's of your father, the devil, and he controls you through thoughts by reminding you of the past, which doesn't exist. Whenever that incident happened, it happened then. It's not happening now, except in your mind, which is an illusion. Then it reminds you of a future. Oh, you're going to have a better future tomorrow, setting you up to be disappointed. So you're up and down in emotions and thoughts. And after a while, you want to commit suicide. Uh, so there's, they got to let it go so that they can be free. Huh, that's interesting. That's an interesting commentary about the past. That's been a, a huge struggle of mine, like living in the past, living in the future, because they say anxiety uh, is, is either you living in the past, or like fear of, of what you've done or fear of things that are going to happen in the future. And it just uh, it robs you of living in the present moment. Do you believe, and I think, do you believe there's a past or a future? Well, I don't know. I mean, having a child has totally changed my perception on the past and the future. Um, I was a horrible alcoholic when I was living in New York City. It was just, I was at the bottom of a bottle. Uh, and for a while, I was just living in so much regret. How could I have made that decision to um, to drink so much and to live in that way? But then I I realized once I had my daughter, if any one thing in my life was different. If any one thing, no matter how small, what if I was living in a reality right now where I didn't have my daughter? And like, just that idea that, that all the roads in my life lead to Emmeline, um, it, it sort of absolved me of my alcoholism because it was the mistakes. It was the triumphs. It was all of those things that led me to this perfect child. And I just don't want to live in a world where I'm not her mom. Yeah. I don't want to live in that world because it's just so important to me. And so I think that that just changed the entire way that I view that I view the past and the future because what I do now, it has to be for her. So do you believe there is a past and a future? I'm not sure that I believe that there is a, a future, a, a concrete predetermined future. Um, I do believe in the past. The past turns people into what they are now. Um, not that we can trust our recollection of the past, you know, the, the memory, it's fallible. And so um, where is the past? I mean, it, it lives within us, I think, but um, I think that people can change their behavior and, and change who they were in the past. There's not one person walking this earth, nor there has ever been, nor will there ever be a person that can change themselves. It's impossible. But they can change their behavior. They can't change their behavior. They just go from one bad behavior to another one. Well, what about self-improvement? Do you think it's impossible? It's impossible to improve self. We are not in control of anything. Only the ego makes you think you're in control, which is the nature of the devil. And the more you try to change yourself, the worse you get. You may stop being an alcoholic, for example, but you become another kind of holic. You try to be nice, which is evil, and you're not happy being nice. You try to be me, you're not happy. You can't change yourself because it's spiritual. It's a spiritual battle. You're, you're really cutting me to the core here. I think you're right, though, because um, <laughs> I have been struggling with Catholicism and, and with my faith, mostly because I don't understand the nature of human suffering. Yeah. Um, and, and I'm struggling with that, and, and I'm desperately struggling with giving control up to God and control has been a huge problem in my life. So you're, you're absolutely right about the, the nature of addiction because after I had recovered from the alcoholism and everything, I developed incredibly intense obsessive compulsive disorder, yeah. which um, manifested in me like really fixating on the, on the health of my child, on my health, things like that. I mean, it was just another way for me to try to control. Yeah. and. I struggle every day to give that control to God and I am bad at it. And I, I fail every day. Like I do not know how 
to do that. The way you do it, you want to know? Of course. The way you do it, you got to see that this anger that you have is evil. Uh, there are spirits that, that are wicked that made a home in your mind, not in you. The real you, you're not your thoughts. You're not your feelings. You're not your body. But it controls you through your mind and it controls you with anger because anyone that has anger is evil and you're being controlled by the spirit and spirits of evil. And that's why you can't make anything work. You'll never be in control. You never will, right? And so if you want to be helped by the love and the truth of God, you got to let go. Stop trying to change this thing, but see that it's there. Yes, I do have anger. Yes, I am out of control. Once you can see it and don't judge yourself because it's not you, then God will take control, especially when you go and forgive. He's going to take over, and then you shall know God. You should know his love. You should walk in his light. But as long as you're trying to change it, you're worshiping the devil. You're, you're digging a hole for yourself. You cannot change it. You got to let go and let the change happen. That's the only way it's going to work. Oh, wow. What do you do about self-loathing? You got, that's judgment. You're judging yourself. And you not only can you not judge others to be free, you cannot judge yourself. You can have mercy on yourself by realizing that that's not me that's doing that. Why do I have these thoughts? I don't, how did, where did these thoughts come from? Those are not my thoughts. Where did these emotions come from? I would never make myself think something bad. I would never bring pain to myself. You got to stop identifying with that. And once you do that, you're going to stop judging yourself. And it's not you, but it's the spirit of evil that made a home in your mind. You're, you're really rocking my world to, to the core here. <laughs> you're not, there's no such thing as depression. There's no such thing as loneliness. No such thing as uh, suicide thoughts. But it's spirits that's in your thoughts that make you think that is you. And you try to do something about it. And that's what the problem is. You got to overcome the wicked spirits. And you can't do that on your own. I promise you, once you forgive, and see that it's something else controlling you, you will be fine. You will let go and let God. Let go and let God. I like that. But you got to let go of the thought. <clears throat> you believe the thoughts and emotions, which is worshiping the devil. It's not oh, you. Oh, yeah, totally. I believe that I'm being led by satanic forces, especially in my OCD, because you get into this rhythm of um, seeking and thinking you'll find the answer. Yeah, and uh, it's not there. It's and not it's not the there. That's exactly it. Yeah. yeah. So you got to work on you by forgiving your mother because that's where it started. She could not help it. Forgive your father for not protecting you from it. He cannot deal with your mother. He's afraid of dealing with her attitude. He doesn't know how to deal with her either and because he never overcame his mother. They both love you in the best way they can, but they don't have that real love because they never forgave. And once you forgive them, you're going to return to the father and life will become amazing for you. The, the emptiness that you have, the void, that thing that feels like something is wrong, is really a longing for the Father. You, and, but the devil tells you that it's something else. Oh, if you get this, if you had that, if you had this. Even if you had 10 babies, that emptiness would still be there until you forgive your mother and father. And then you would turn around and go back to the Father, and you would be fulfilled, and it would be amazing. But you're longing for the father because your mother turned you away from him when she imposed her will on you. And that's what I'm doing. Absolutely. You're doing exactly what your mother has done. Mm -hmm. And you won't be able to help it until that spirit of anger is taken away from you. Okay. I think I can do this. <laughs> I, I do too. It's just you didn't quite know what it was. Now you know what it is. You know what you need to do. Most people don't know, even the Christians don't know what it is. They read the Bible, they go to church, they lift up, hold a hand, but they're miserable. Oh, they, yeah. they are still worshiping the devil all in the name of Jesus. And they excuse it by not forgiving. They make up excuses to not forgive. God said to forgive. He, he, we are protected with perfect love. And the only way you're going to have that is you must forgive so that he can forgive you and take that spirit away. 
and you would never have to worry about your daughter, your relationship will last until death do your part with your husband. That's such great advice because I have been struggling with this, especially in my my prayer life. Um, I've been I've been treating God like a genie or something like yes. that. Like <laughs> I've been praying every day for the for the things that I want, and, and and I do pray to have a closer relationship with God. But I am wrapped up in um in the anger that I I have towards Him about my suffering. Yeah, and it has made it impossible for me to develop a genuine relationship with God, like, cause I'm just pissed off all the time. Yeah. So I what, think you're right. Especially the, the heart, the heart of my problem is my anger. I think you're spot on with that assessment. All of your prayers have been to Satan and not to God. Woo. Oh, <laughs> everyone that has anger prayed to Satan all in the name of Jesus. Right. But they're not praying to, to God. That's why your prayers have not been answered. When you see that you're wrong for having this anger, God is allowing you to see that, and he's trying to draw you back because you can't see it for yourself. He allows you to see it. Once you see it and go and forgive, no more reason to be praying to the devil, and you're going to live in the presence of God, and all your prayers will be answered without even asking. Huh. Because you will have no problems. Okay, have no problems, I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> and God has never caused you suffering at all. It's, uh, it came from anger through your mother and through her mother and all the way on and on, right? So you have always been controlled by evil, never by God didn't bring you those problems. God is perfect love. He doesn't judge us. He doesn't give us problems. He doesn't test us. He loves us. So it's, it's not possible for him to do those things. And you will become like him once you forgive. Wow. What a revelation. And, and I, I do worry that I'm not capable of that level of forgiveness because I feel like it's my armor. And then I've been doing this for so long that I feel like my anger may have just become my personality. And that troubles me. Yeah. Well, that I've made an identity out of my anger. That's only because you have identified with it as though it is yours and it's not you. It's not yours. It's that spirit. But you grew up thinking that it was you. So you identify with it. And once you identify with it, it became yours. But it's not you at all. It has never been you. God has never judged you. The real you, the real Rebecca, has never done anything wrong. You're not guilty of anything. You're neither right nor wrong. You're neither up or down. This is false identity that you have identified with thinking that is you. Once all that disappears, the real Rebecca will come forth and it's going to blow your mind. Once you let that go, you're going to see the real Rebecca and you're none of the things that you've grown up thinking that you are. You've been deceived <laughs> You're right. in your imagination. <laughs> Just think Thank about it. That. If you were in control of that, if that was you, you would never do some of the things you have done. You will right. always do happy things. You will always have happy decisions. But you don't have that because it's not you. It's something else that made a home. All thoughts are all lies all the time about anything. No such thing as a true thought. Right. The ones that build you up right. is a lie. And the ones that tear you down is a lie. And you're divided. You're not one person. You're not whole. But once you let all that go, you become one person instead of divided. You'll be whole and again. That's the thing about evil, isn't it? That um, it masquerades as good. Yes. And it makes it so difficult to differentiate. Absolutely. 100%. Evil is evil. And it pretend to be God. And it's not. And so that's why I told you there's no such thing as a past or a future. There's nowhere the past exists except in your mind. And it's evil that is telling you that the past it still exists. So it can keep you angry and afraid and worried. And then once you're in that condition, it tells you, oh, tomorrow is going to be better. And now you feel good, which is a false feeling. And when tomorrow comes, it's not better. Now you back down on yourself until after a while you want to jump off a bridge somewhere. <laughs> That's definitely true. Yeah. It's with um, all people. Not one person on this side of heaven is not dealing with that, but only a few are going to overcome it. 
Right. Yeah. I, I don't know how anybody out. can get through life without without some modicum of faith. Yeah. Right? Like, how can you even do it? Things would be so bleak. Yes. Um, my uncle also had OCD, but he was an atheist and, and, uh, he could not cope with it and he killed himself like yep. two or three years ago. Um, and I just think like maybe if he had had faith, but I also struggle with that because I, I feel like God doesn't give you more than you could handle, but he couldn't handle his circumstances. And that's why he committed suicide. Well, what it mean when you say God does not give you more than you can handle? When you well, maybe, were going, when you were going through the ego death, because once you change your heart to from hate to love, you're going to then have to die from the ego, which is the nature of the devil, and that could be a heavy load sometimes because you're so identified with it. He will give you little of that so that you can deal with that, so that the ego can die and then you shall live. Just as Christ died on the cross, he had to go through the same thing, and so that's what you have to go through. And the light of God would cause the ego to death, to die, and it, would be, it wouldn't be more than you can handle. It's, it feel like you can't handle it, but you can.